Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Just showing you some Montmartre gesso. I pre gessoed my page. I am working in an altered book. As you can see, the right hand right hand side is a bit darker. That was a black and white photo that I covered up. Sometimes I incorporate them into my artwork. Sometimes, if they're not appropriate, I just gesso over them. So, using some Semco paints, these ones come from Lingcraft. And they're a bit translucent. I bought them for my gel plate, but they didn't quite work. But I decided to use them in my art journal as well. So they're a little translucent, but that's all right. So they're a little um, see-through. So I'm just using a silicon spatula to apply the paint to my background. I didn't really know what I was doing in this page. Just wanted to play. Um, I've been doing that a lot lately, just grabbing out my art journal and just playing and not really having an idea in mind, either having a a product I want to play with or a technique I want to sort of try but the page sort of goes where the page goes so the blue is quite transparent I do like applying the paint with the silicon spatula that one actually comes from Riot Art and Craft but you can get them from a huge variety of places they're great because they thin they put the paint on really really thin and you can get some really cool tool marks or uh, marks in your paint as well so putting on some purple do I end up using a purple or blue and a cream in the end the purple seemed a bit dark but I sort of decided I like those three colours together so I used them. Um, so I've seen this technique before where you do a colourful background and use a stencil and I worked out my stencil was not large enough. I've seen this done with a 12 inch stencil but hey I only had a 6 inch one so I thought I'd give it a try. This page had to grow on me a lot, went through a few ugly stages so I just grabbed a makeup sponge and some black gesso again from Montmartre. I do like their black gesso. Their white one is good if you put it in thin mounts. Um, it's a good affordable gesso, the Montmartre ones in Australia. So just dabbing that through the stencil in several different areas. Again, this would have worked better with a bigger stencil. So this is one of the stencils I make and design in my business. So there's more details on my website. I've always got the description link below if you're interested. So this channel is a bit more about having fun, not promoting my products. Um, so I do mention if it's one of my products, but I don't go into it heavily. So I decided to add the circles all over the page. It's giving me the look I want, but again, this would look better in a 12-inch stencil. But hey, I was working with what I got. So just, I love putting, when I'm doing shapes, I love putting them off to the side and having half one showing through, as opposed to having the just the circles in the middle of the page and I do apologize for the ripping noises in the background my daughter's bunnies live in the back of the room I film in and every time I do a voiceover they decide they want to contribute at the moment they're wrecking their house it was a cardboard box can't call it a cardboard box anymore so still stenciling around I decided to put another one up the top of the left hand side of the page I love how the bright colors peek through so while saying the purple was probably not ideal, I probably should have had a bit of a brighter colour. A green would have looked nice. Maybe I'll do it with a green again and find a 12 inch stencil. <laughs> I'm waiting on stencil plastic to come in from um, overseas actually, so I'm very low on what I can play with with my stencil plastic. Usually I just go and cut whatever I want. So using the makeup sponge, I did goof it up there, so I do try to fix that up later. There's no wrong with the use art journal. Now the bunnies are playing with their balls and throwing them all over the place. Ugh, bunnies. So here I grabbed my Wild Honey Oxide ink and another one of my stencils, the leaves, and decided to use one of these fantastic blending brushes. A.K.A. looks like a makeup brush. It probably is a makeup brush. Um, to put some ink. I love using these brushes with the ink and the finer detail stencils because you get a really fine look. And I love how the oxides jump off the black. Oxide inks and myself have an interesting relationship. I didn't really want them because I have all the distress inks and I don't really use those anymore. Um, but then I discovered them on black and darker surfaces and I'm in love because you don't get many products that actually work well on black surfaces. I just wish the oxides come in a white ink because um, I really love a white ink pad that really, really stands out on the black that's a story for another day so just filling in the little areas on the stencil there's areas where the leaves finish and so the branches are so just filling those in with dots because I didn't really want the leaf pattern in the background I sort of wanted it just just pattern it just needed something to lift it and I think this is quite subtle can't see a lot of it at the moment but you will see it 
better when I show you the close-ups at the end of the video. So I love how that background turned out at this stage. Before I was like, eh, what am I going to do now? I don't know what I'm going to do. But I do like it after I added that. Um, and with the magic of filming, here comes my focal images that I spent about half an hour to an hour going and trying to find what I wanted to use. And then I found some letter stickers to do with my quote. Now they are black letter stickers which worked really well, but I couldn't stick them directly on my page. So I've decided to grab a piece of white cardstock and make like letter tiles or letter blocks. And a little bit of white around the letters do make them stand out. So these letter stickers are from the Reject Shop. I think they've a pack of four or five sheets worth like $4 or something. It's quite reasonable. I like them because they're paper. Yeah, there's five designs in there. And I do like mixing up the different fonts either in the same word or this particular time I just use the same letters in the word and mix up the words with different um, the different fonts. Especially love the thick black ones. These ones I'm using at the moment. So it's great to use up your letter stickers. I use a lot of letter stickers in art journaling and even you can use all the odd letters you don't use when you can't spell any more words because you always run out of the common letters and letter stickers. It's the only downside of them. Um, you can just use them as randomness in the background, which is really cool. I've done that a few times. And these circle ones you can put in the background and paint over and you wouldn't know they were letter stickers and you get sort of still the circle shape. So they're really cool. And then the waist is really cool to use as well. So you can use up everything when you're using letter stickers in art journaling, even in scrapbooking as well. So I apologise about the glare. I'm trying to work on better lighting, but at the moment it is what it is. The magazine images on the right hand side actually are glossy so they glare a bit more and these stickers have a bit of gloss on them as well. So that is why the camera is um, glaring. So I've cut from a fashion magazine a dress, some wings. Wings are appearing on all my art journal projects at the moment. I do not know why. I don't know why I'm obsessed with wings. They just keep appearing. So there's a butterfly wing, so a big butterfly image I cut out and there's an owl statue of some kind. And then there's these two little sort of crowy magpie things. I don't know, I think they're from an art book. I really don't know. Um, I'm starting to organise all my images in sort of small, medium and large for collage because I love putting things like this together. The wackier the better. So I try to glue these down with, I might too. Oh, this. Okay, this was a fail from um, Lincraft. I assumed it was, it said structured gel on it, so I assumed it was like a heavy gloss medium, so a heavy, a heavy gel that I could stick like cardstock and stuff down to my pages, but it's actually like embossing, um, like texture paste that's just raised so it has no glue in it. So I do go back and end up gluing these again. Um, I should not shop quickly and should pay attention a bit more. Blame it on my low vision. <laughs> I do have tons of that structure paste, texture paste now. I didn't need any more of that. What I do was the other stuff. And there goes a yawn. I shouldn't be yawning. It's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So just gluing those down again using my silicone spatula. I've been using that a lot more instead of paintbrushes. A, I'm lazy and I hate cleaning my paintbrushes. And B, it's just easier. And clean up or you just wipe it with a baby wipe. It is so cool. And you can get really cool um, looks with it. The bunnies are pushing the cage out. Oh, naughty bunnies. I think we've got two of the naughtiest bunnies on the planet. So I just decided to do a thin border around the words just to give them an edge. I find edging things just give the page or the piece just a finish instead of just being white. So I'm just using a SIG, I don't know what it is, it's like a fine linery thing I picked up at um, Officeworks ages ago and it just kept going and going and going. So it's quite a fine one but if you do it on paint you can sort of smudge it so it's really cool. Um, Uniball, Signo, something or other. Um, you can just use a normal black pen or any sort of marker works just as well. So I love how this ends. I, my art journaling is very diverse. I watch several YouTubers and their style is very recognisable and their pages are very similar. Now I'm a bit of a serendipity 
uh, journal out. A lot of my pages are just unique and different and weird and wonderful. And that's just me. I'm unique, different, weird and wonderful. So again, I persist with this structured gel. Thinking of using the right kind of glue and I do need to go and fix these after the um, video has ended and I do fix some of them on video because it's just not sticking. Plus I'm sticking on top of gesso. I've found when I'm sticking um, anything on top of paint, acrylic paint or gesso, it, it, it's harder, um, it's not harder. Some glues like it better and some glues don't. I was using a glue stick the other day, just a kid's glue stick, and it wouldn't glue on paint, but paper to paper, it would stick perfectly. So it just depends on what surface you're gluing onto. Um, I must get some of that heavy gloss matte medium to stick stuff like the magazine images on with. I didn't particularly want to go over the top of these magazine images. Otherwise, I would have used my matte medium or matte gel medium, the thinner stuff. So I decided my page needed a border, so I just grabbed a whiteout pen. It's the best white pen i found, and just doing a squiggly border around the edge. I then went over the image, and I didn't want to. I wanted my images to be in the foreground, and then the sort of have the background, so I um, wiped that off with a baby wipe. It's the advantage of working over magazine images. It's shiny, and if you're quick enough, you can wipe it off. So then I decided to outline my um, magazine image as well. When you outline the magazine images, when you stick them on the page, it sort of grounds them and makes them look like they belong there, as opposed to just sticking out. So most of the time I do outline them with black, but sometimes I do go around with white. This particular time I used white, obviously, because I had a black background and you wouldn't have seen it. I got my chalk Ola paint markers that I got really cheap on Amazon first come to Australia. If you're a long time subby, you've heard that version a lot. They were like a dollar if you signed up to Amazon and I ended up getting four or five different versions of packets. And it was free shipping, so who could beat that deal? Um, they work really well. They're chalk markers, so they are... Just clean up my silicon brush there. Um, they're chalk markers, so they're ideally meant for a chalk board, but they work really well on magazine images and they don't rub off. A lot of cheap chalk markers do rub off once they're dry, which is not what you want. These ones, the only problem with them is they don't like to write over the top of each other, but if you only do one single layer, it's starting to prime the pen. Obviously, I haven't used that colour before. So when you're using them over the top of each other, they don't like to work. Um, and sometimes they have a few issues, but hey, for a dollar for a pack of eight markers that work fairly well, who would turn that down? I've had these for several years too. I don't know how long Amazon's been in Australia. Probably about three years, three and a half years, two and a half years, I don't know. Long time. Um, so just d decided to do some doodles and scribbles on the butterfly just to make it, it, it like it's a realistic photo of a butterfly just to want to make it a bit more cartoony-ish and I love sitting here and doodling and fiddling on um, magazine pages and I do apologise about the glare I didn't realise I was getting a lot of glare otherwise I would have changed the angle of the photo changed the angle of the video I'm also playing around with a new webcam and it and I are not friends <laughs> it and I have issues but we are getting there I think it's just user error. If I read the manual, I'd probably be really great at it. So just adding some dots. I do go a bit crazy with a paint pen, but knowing when to stop in art journaling is something I am still learning. I've been art journaling for hmm, seven or eight years, and seriously, probably for the last five years, and still need to know when to stop because sometimes I do take it too far. I'm having so much fun in the moment. Here I'm trying to fix up some of the stenciling just to define the lines where I goofed up the um, black gesso. I had a paint pen that was almost the colour of my paint so it worked out well. So putting some dots around, just filling in. This page does get a little bit busy with the paint pen work. But as I said, I have fun. I'm in the moment. I'm just, it's very cathartic and very relaxing just to sit there and do some dots with paint pens or some squiggles, some lines. And when you go over images like this, it sort of gives them, it gives it your own flair. So if everyone used these images from the same magazine in a class, everyone would do load them in a totally different way, which makes them unique to you as well. So colouring in some of the scribbles on the dress. I find if I colour in one image, I didn't actually do a lot on the owl's face because I wanted that to stand out, but I did do uh, a fair bit of work on the wings and on the dresses as well. So anything, any colour I do put on top of the magazine images, I do like to put some dots or dashes or marks in the background 
just to tie the colours in unless they sort of match enough the colours I've used in the background to not do that. So we're nearly finished at the end, so I go a bit dot crazy. I know it looks like my page has a measles, but um, that's okay. So coming up with some still photos at the end, um, and I have finished. So thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon in the next video. Leave us a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Bye for now.